I'm trying again to uh, reach out to you with the second half of four options for solving any community or societal problem. We talked last time about the four options for solving any problem, but um, research has shown, and I do a lot of research, that a skill you learn in one context does not always translate into the next. So let's imagine for a second that you remember last week, I'll review real quickly, uh, four problems for solving, <laughs> four options for solving any problem are, you solve the problem, which sounds pretty basic, right? You feel better about the problem, you tolerate the problem, or you stay miserable. Now, when we're talking about societal issues, we're talking about a lot of people who have varying amounts of very important currencies. We have four currencies with which we can solve any problem when we're talking about a societal or a political problem, and those are time, money, influence, and power. And very few of us have unlimited amounts of any of those. So, when we talk about solving a problem, and we're talking about our own individual effort, we're not typically talking about solving the whole problem. For instance, I want to increase access to mental health services in the United States. Am I going to be able to do that for every human being in the United States? I don't have the influence, time, money, or power for that. But can I solve the problem for a few people? I absolutely can. I provide a few pro bono appointments every week. I make these videos that teach people some mental health concepts, and I reach out often on my website and my Facebook and Twitter to talk about societal mental health problems and ask people to use their influence, power, money, and time to benefit those things. You hear a little noise in the background. I'm in my work office right now, and we do not have very tightly soundproofed offices. And there is another therapist across the hall doing a session right now. And I can kind of sort of hear her. I can't hear what's being said, but I can hear her very bubbly, wonderful voice. And so I know that she's there. Now, let's go back to I want to make health care more accessible for Americans all across the country. Realistically, I'm not doing that all by myself because it's just not possible. So let's look at how I'm going to tolerate that problem. What am I going to ask myself that'll make these questions a little easier? Who's working on this problem? If I know that my professional organization, the National Association for Social Workers, is working on the problem, that helps. Who's working against it? If I know that those working against it are slowly losing ground and that those working for it are slowly gaining ground, that helps me feel better about the problem. Can I assist somebody else? You know, I may not have time to start a new initiative that gives more people access to mental health, but what I might do is, let's say I have a friend or an acquaintance that has an idea that might serve to help more people have more access to mental health services. Well, in those cases, I might just, you know, let people know about their idea or provide a little money to it or contact my congressperson, Emmanuel Cleaver, or Congress contact one of my two senators, Josh Hawley or Roy Blunt, and let them know that I think these are a good idea. I might even spend the time to, write, to do a research project or do a white paper for one of the politicians I've mentioned. Um, do I need to change my focus for my own well-being? What if there is no clear path to getting this problem solved? What if the best estimates of how long it's going to take for society to look at this problem seriously enough for, take, for it to get solved range in the decades or even hundreds of years zone. 
what can I focus on right now that can move it together a little bit right now? Is it enough? Probably not. Will it help? Absolutely. So I've gotten to the point where even though I can't solve the problem of access to mental health in the United States, I can tolerate the difference between what I think it should be and what it is. Well, how am I going to make that something that I can carry through? What if the person or people running the country right now, I don't have any faith in. I don't think that they have my client's well-being in mind. I don't think they have my well-being in mind because, as I've said before, I live with my own chronic conditions, PTSD, executive function from a head injury, and chronic major depression. And so I'm worried about that. How do I tolerate problem? Well, one of the good news in the United States is there's an election somewhere pretty much every month. So I get involved by solving those little problems. How do I get more people from the bottom of the political chain to the top of the political chain? I spend time, money, influence, or power on making sure their political statements get heard. Even if they don't get election, what was that platform that was really going with them? They were talking about getting better mental health in prisons. What a great idea. We have a lot of people in our prisons in the United States. How do we get them so that they don't go back? Well, we give them better mental health care. Kind of like the way this yellow and, I mean, this green and red turn into kind of an orangey color when they blend here. So I'm going to keep doing this. Finally, as we all know, the final way to solve any problem is to stay miserable. That would be if I spent all my time saying, you know, this solution isn't perfect, so I'm not going to try. This person has this thing wrong with them, and I don't like it, so I'm not going to vote for them, even though I agree with 90% of what they say. Uh, this person or this idea is going to cost more than I want to or it doesn't have this thing that I want in it. So I'm going to speak out against it even though for the most part it's in the same line as me. This is what stay miserable looks like. It's when we kind of say, you know, I'm not going to try unless I get exactly what I want. And if I don't get exactly what I want, I'm going to just stay here, stay miserable, and help you stay miserable too. Because that's an important part about when you're doing societal and community change. If you're staying miserable, you're often helping the whole community to stay miserable. And we don't want that. I'm reminding you of this because it doesn't really matter what your political goal is. It doesn't really matter uh, what your dream is what matters is that you find a path where you can make something move towards in your path you know my not very orange fox here is just ready to begin he is looking pretty sly he's ready to go he isn't perfect i didn't fill in all the spots i colored outside all the lines every now and then I frankly made up my own lines every now and then. Here's my signature. Solve the problem. Reach out with time, money, power, or influence. Or reach out to those who have time, money, power, or influence. Feel better about the problem. Focus on what you can do. Focus on the steps forward we're making. Focus on helping people keep moving. Tolerate the problem. When you find it falling away, when you find it really hard to keep going, do what you need to do to renew yourself, to rejuvenate yourself, to say, you know what? Right now, this is what we've got. I'm going to work within this to make it better. Or you can stay miserable. You can put down every solution somebody brings forward. You can con 
continually say it's not enough, it's never enough, it's never going to be enough. You can say so-and-so is a terrible politician and I won't vote for them even though they believe in 99% of what I believe in. You can say this organization doesn't do this one thing that I wish they would do instead of forming your own organization that does that other thing or finding another organization that does that other thing. Solving any community problem comes from communal work, and communal work means that we're not going to get everything we want ever. I am never going to find a politician that agrees with 100% of what I want done. But if that politician at my local level, at my school board level, at my city level, at my county level, at my state level, at my federal level, even at the UN, if that person is saying, hey, I agree with you on the basics of this. I can work with that person. If you start out by saying mental health is a need and we need to make sure that need is being met, we're in the same place. That's what it means to solve the problem. Don't be afraid to just begin. Don't be afraid to step out and say, I only have five bucks. That's the amount of money I have. I only have five minutes. That's the amount of time I have. Hey, I have a friend who has a friend who has a friend who is a cousin who's on the school board. That's the amount of influence I have. And you know what? I can write a letter and I have the power to say no or yes to this one thing. That's the power I have. Some of us, the only power we have is our vote. And that's an important power. So use those four options for solving any problem. Make your issue a better issue. Solve the problem. Feel better about the problem. Tolerate the problem or stay miserable. All of them can be valid at times. Sometimes you got to wallow to find the next step. That's okay. And I will see you in a few days with a brand new topic that, like before, I will start first from a mental health perspective and then take into the political, community, societal sphere for you. Because that's how I roll, and I really am out of my mind, and I'm Jenny Lyles, and I'll see you next time.